And can you talk about how you guys are utilizing the extra development time? Um, a lot of it is going back in and polish and making sure that, you know, we always laugh in the studio here that, you know, in, in, in games gone by, we would have shipped this game by now. But the decisions we made a couple of years ago was, let's get the game built, and then let's go in and make sure that story is perfect, and that any of the loose ends get tidied up, the polish, the bugs, anything that we felt we would never have kind of, we would have looked at them and said we ran out of time, now we want us to make sure that didn't happen. We've spent an enormous amount of time bringing in script writers and story writers to play our game after it was finished to make sure that we kind of keep that story and that uh, vision all the way through. So what are you showing here that's new, like with environments and gameplay? So what we're showing here is really the first three hours of the game, we're giving you the opportunity to to really feel like there are tombs in Tomb Raider, there's combat, there's exploration, there's substance, there's choices. So the base camp system is one where we've given you the chance to upgrade a lot more. This is the first time we've ever given anybody the opportunity to play combat. So now you've had the chance to be able to go in and understand how you can distract people, how you can separate them up, or you can get melee or you can get stealth. So really that's a big part of the game because it decides how you want to play it. Um, so there's actually quite a lot. There's uh, a lot of the menu system, the uncoverables, the collectibles. Our goal was to really say that in these two and a half, three hours of gameplay that we're giving you the chance to get your hands on, you could walk away feeling like this is a Tomb Raider game. This has got the essence of what it takes to be, uh, to be a Lara Croft. And where is Laura in the development of her skills in these levels? Um, she's still, well, she's early enough on, but she's getting stronger. She's becoming more competent in the situation. In the first uh, hour or so, we really don't give you any weapons apart from the bow, which is what you use just to survive by hunting. But when you go through that first kill moment, you turn a corner. You realize that you're motivated for different reasons. You've been attacked, nearly captured, and somebody tried to kill you, and you've had to, to kill. Uh, it's like a, a kill or be kill situation. As a result of that, you then start to progress with the motivation, knowing that you can't stop and talk to these people on the island. You have to become somebody else. You have to become stronger. Speaking of skills, like how do Laura's skills uh, progress throughout this game? So. One of the ideas about how we progress skills was that you start with a very fine set of abilities. So whether it be the gear that you've got or your senses on the island, your sense of understanding. Um, as you progress and you do things like grinding or killing animals or taking leaps of faith to be able to get to the highest point or do things which you wouldn't normally do, we reward the player with XP. When you get the XP, you can, you can, you can channel that into skill points and then you can choose to unlock certain attributes that you want to see Lara progress through. So whether it's more resourcefulness, defensiveness, um, you know, the idea of being able to use your survival instinct in a new and unique way to be able to see animals or see plants that you want to pick up to be able to, to heal yourself. So there's a lot of things inside of the game that you have choices to be able to see the progression. But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, we want you to go through this character arc. You'll still finish the game in the same way, but you've just taken a different path to get there. And you've seen your character evolve under your terms. And can you offer some advice for players who are going to jump right into this game? Uh, yeah, it's actually very accessible. You're starting from day one. You're going through the journey uh, with Lara Croft, and uh, you know there's there's a there's a there's a good amount of tutorials built in a way where it's actually fun. It's not we're going to plunk you into an area and say spend the next 15 minutes learning how to do A B C. We actually say let's take those things that we want to teach you about, but bring you into unique experiences that you feel like you're actually learning as you go through. It's a very visceral uh, experience. Um, so it's it's something which anybody can pick up and play. It really is the most accessible game. And then when you get into the combat section, again, it's all about your choices. It's about how you want to be able to take on situations. And how do you like to play? Um, I like to play, I actually really like um, stealth purely because we built the game to be a living, breathing world. When you play through the game and you play it in stealth, you get to listen. You get to hear people having conversations. Um, you come into places where if you take two or three out and they don't realize you're there, you get closer to some of the things that you would never have seen if you had just gone in and shot the light out and everybody started shooting at you. And also you get to see that things are happening whilst you're not aware. So an example of that is you, know, you come into the World War II base at the uh, top of the, the night hub in the waste of the radio tower that you just played. When you come into that space, there's a light on, and the guy screams, turn that light off my face. You know, some people will go in and shoot him, and just then all of a sudden the alarms will go off and everybody comes scurrying out, and then you're into a firefight. But if you melee, are you stealth all the way through that space? By the time you get inside the building, those guys that would have been called out in a rush, they're actually working. They're actually like welding and putting a staircase together and doing the things that you expect should be happening. And when you come across their conversations, it's actually really fulfilling to think, I've come across them and they don't realize it. I still kill them, but I get to hear something unique about the world. And what's your favorite weapon in the game? 
Uh, my favorite weapon is actually the bow. Um, I've tried everything a million and one times, but there's just something about the bow which makes me feel really, really strong, really powerful. Uh, the idea that I can go from being somewhere up close, shooting a guy in the knee when he falls down, sticking an arrow in his head, or being stealthy by being able to pick somebody off from a ranged position. So, you know, I, I normally go in, I upgrade the bow to uh, a couple of different levels beyond what you've seen here today. I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but it becomes a really versatile tool in Lara's arsenal. And what style of play uh, works for different environments? You mentioned that there's lights that, that flag your location if you're too noisy. Yeah, so again, it depends on the player's um, sort of feeling in a space. So we've built these hub areas. As we said, we're not an open world game, but what we have done is build a space where you have freedom to be able to traverse um, the way in which you want. And when you come into a space, our goal is to be able to say, you finish it, you feel like there was a balance of exploration, some combat, and definitely some puzzle solving. Uh, depending on the play style that you've got, you can actually say, I got more combat in that space than I did puzzle solving because that's the type of player that I am. But that's your choice. So we've built these areas to allow you to be able to sort of feel like I have different, uh, different abilities and different paths.